Hi Matt here and welcome to M2M. Yes, I know it's been a little while since I made a video and I'm sorry, but life just gets in the way and a crowded house and it's a little bit difficult to find time and quiet time and space to make a video. So it's early morning here and I want to make a return in addressing the so-called deathbed confession of Cyrus Akers, who was supposedly in charge of security of the moon hoax. Uh, supposedly filmed in a studio in Cannon Air Force Base. So, let's cue the music and see what this is about. And let's get into it. Hello, my name is Gene Gilmore. Uh, my birth given name is Eugene Rubin Akers. I don't want any money for what I'm doing because hopefully this video won't come out until after my death. So I have nothing to gain, nothing to profit by telling you what I'm going to tell you. And um, a lot of what I'm going to tell you is available online until they see this video. And I'm sure things will start getting scrubbed. Well, as you can see straight away, you know who's behind this. It's Bart Sabrell. Um, as well as moon photos, but anyway, my father, uh, in 1968 was stationed at Cannon Air Force Base in New Mexico. Well, so far, there's been no forthcoming information that his father, Cyrus Eugene Akers, was stationed at Cannon Air Force Base. There was an investigation made by lead stories. I'll put a link in the description, uh, but so far, there's no record of that. I made notes on my computer. Um, so that uh, I wouldn't forget anything because uh, there's a lot, a lot of. So here's problem number one. As you can see in the screen, the computer confiscated by government raid, and this is supposedly the computer he made notes on. But there's no record or any evidence presented that there was any such government raid. Very convenient, don't you think? Little things and stuff that I'd forget. So um, these notes were made a long time ago. The original recording that my father made on his deathbed was um, um, destroyed in a fire. Um, so here's problem number two. So a recording or video that he's supposed to have made of his father's confession was lost in a fire. As it says on the screen, a fire of unknown origin. Yet another big convenience, don't you think? But, um, so this is my deathbed confession because now I'm dying of cancer. I've got cancer all over the place and so, and they don't know where it's coming from and I don't know if they can stop it, but it don't look good. So I'm going to go ahead and make this video for Bart Seibrell. He knows not to do anything with it until, uh, until notification of my death, uh, for which my son will respond to that. Okay, uh, like I said, in 1968, my father was stationed at Cannon Air Force Base in New Mexico. Uh, we lived in Clovis, New Mexico. He was in the military police for over 20 years, and on his deathbed in 2002, we made a recording of what happened. Except the recording has been very conveniently lost. I already told you what happened to the recording. But it doesn't matter because all the facts are there, so it doesn't matter who's telling the story or whatever. Well, it kind of does matter if you can't actually prove that the person that's already died actually said the things that they said. Um, I will, at the end of the video, I'll supply a picture of my father, his badge, um, the flag of when they buried him. I'll show you some photos, photo, photos of my dad. Um, I was born in 1955. So in 1969, I was 14 years old. I vividly remember the uh, Apollo 11 coming down, landing on the moon, they're walking around and all that stuff. <laughs> anyway, I never, I never questioned that until, um, until my dad told me what he told me on his deathbed. Which we have no evidence of. And then I started doing a little, nothing major, nothing, just surfing the web, I think they call it surfing, surfing the web. Um, and a lot of that information is right there on the web. I mean, it, it, it verifies the story that he told me. Um, 
a good detective, a good one, would be able to uncover a lot more uh, of the story that I'm getting ready to tell you. So, please have at it. I've never known my dad to lie. Um, if you've never known your dad to lie, then why do you need to say it in a video? But be aware, this is not the first time he says it. To get caught lying was worse than whatever it was you did to begin with. I remember going to school with long sleeve shirts on uh, to hide the purple welts. Uh, you did not lie in our house, that's for sure. Dad had a real, <coughs> really bad attitude towards lying. Excuse me again. Um, okay, anyway, this is, this is the story that my dad told me on his deathbed. Project Slam Dunk was the name of, of this. Project Slam Dunk is allegedly the project name for the moon hoax conspiracy. It's well known about, but absolutely no evidence of. Um, President Johnson in 1968, okay, um, in Cannon Air Force Base in 1968, he said by that time, by the time he got there, that there was already two large hangars that were connected. There was hundreds of dump trucks that came in and dumped sand and uh, uh, stone and uh, cement powder was powdered over the top of all that to make it look like a lunar landscape. They had men that fa fashioned it into a lunar landscape, he said. So here's another problem with that. If you think about it, sand with cement powder sprinkled all over it. What do you think is going to happen when you start walking all over it? With all the thousands of photographs and hundreds of hours of videos of people walking, of the men walking all over the moon, do you not think that sound's going to be exposed? But we don't see any of that. That makes absolutely no sense. Okay, I've never known my dad to lie, so this all took me by. And there it is again. I've never known my dad to lie. Why does he need to say it again? Surprise. You know, <laughs> what's that all about? So anyway, um... He said that in front of the uh, the airplane hangars uh, was uh, pole framing with uh, large canvas tents um, that was uh, concealing the inside of the staging area. Except there's no eyewitness testimony from anybody else seeing any of this. Inside the staging area uh, on flatbed trucks was on created um, the lunar lander that was assembled, reassembled back inside the hangars. Um, all of the walls were painted flat black and the ceilings as well. Except there's, here's the problem with that. If you think about it, if you paint the walls and the ceiling back, pitch black with a black paint, you're still going to see that there's a wall or a ceiling because it's not also not going to be a perfect black. You're still going to notice it. So that makes absolutely no sense. He was sworn to secrecy by the NSA and uh, they would put him in prison for breaking that oath. And when Dad saw the, the moon landing on TV, he cried. He said he knew um, that what he had witnessed on TV was exactly what they recorded in that hangar. Um, there was no reason for them to go flying around and everything. They had detailed high definition photos of the landing area. There was no reason for them to go flying around to a different landing area that almost exhausted their fuel except for drama, because everything had gone so smoothly. Well, I don't know about high definition uh, photos of the landing area. Yes, they had images of the landing area. And yes, they intended to land a specific area. However, the guidance computer actually overshot them. And it was actually starting, wanted to land the spacecraft in an unsafe area where there was very big boulders and it was unsafe. So Neil Armstrong took manual control and overflew that area, plus a crater and landed in a much safer area. Um, nothing, you know, so it had to be something. Anyway, um, Dad was one of three guards that guarded the, uh, the inside of the front entrance. There was a list of 15 people who could enter. No one else was allowed by order of President Johnson. And here is that list, and I gave it to Bart Seibrell as well. Uh, and he checked out a lot of these names and he says he can verify a lot of these people and what they do 
Um, and I come across a couple myself. Anyway, President Johnson, Neil Armstrong, Edwin Alden, Werner von Braun, Robert Emenegger, Gene Krantz, James Webb, Joe Kerwin, Dr. Thomas Paine, Glenn Looney, Dr. For Christopher Kraft, Dr. James Van Allen, General Trudeau, Trudeau, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Donald Simon, and Grant Norrie. Now, the only two that I ha really have information on is Robert Emenegger. Uh, apparently, he did uh, a lot of uh, video work and stuff for uh, um, the Department of Defense. Um, so, the, the, the DOD did know him, okay? And the other one was uh, Grant Norrie, N-O-R-R-A-Y, I believe, um, was... Uh, to the best of my to the best of my dad's knowledge was a uh, uh, like some FBI CIA NSA who knows something like that okay so here's the next big problem out of all the people that he listed on that list was one director one film director that did all the staging the filming the sound the lighting the props and the directing for just one man Robert Emenegger. Look up on Google and see what movies he actually did. So one man did all those things. That's laughable. Okay, President Johnson only showed up for the first day of filming. Filming lasted for three days and the entire project was restored to original. And the next problem. There's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that President Johnson was at Cannon Air Force Base as that she's stating. In fact, there's evidence to the contrary I'll leave a link in the description from a friend of mine who actually dug deep into this and he'll actually see evidence that he most likely was not there. In other words, the hangars were all taken apart, the sand was all removed and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, Dad said there was a lot of building going on at the base so at the time, so sand and cement powder was never questioned. Um, I can see how they could smuggle that all in with them and everything else that's going on. Well, that's just maybe. But what about everything else that was supposedly smuggled in, including the marquees? I'm pretty sure that people would have noticed that. And considering you could look it up yourself, Cannon Air Force Base was a training base during that time. It was a very busy Air Force Base. And nobody else saw anything? Really? Come on. Um... Since 2002, I have dug up at, or I already told you about that, the evidence for the moon landing that I have found. Um, if you go to Google and go to uh, uh, Cannon Air Force Base website, they admit that President Johnson was there. The lunar lander was there. The astronauts were there. I also have uh, uh, verified some of the people on the list were there. Oh, look, how very convenient. So, the supposed evidence that was on supposedly on the Cannon Air Force website that President Johnson and all those other people were there were can very conveniently removed. Oh yes, of course it was. I also verified there are a lot of uh, building going on in the base, just as he had told me. And all of this was going on at the same time, on the same date. Dad told me all these things father to son. Um, he also told me not to ever tell anyone what he had said, but he said on his deathbed that he had to tell somebody before he died because it was just too important not to tell. So if his father didn't want him to tell anybody, why did he allow him to, uh, to make a video recording or recording? And also to take notes? That makes no sense. I sure as hell wasn't going to tell anybody. <laughs> Except you have. Because you made a video for Bart Sabrell. Um, uh, yeah, I feared for my wife and, and me and my son, and I'll tell you why. Ever since I contacted Bart Sabrell, I think they may be listening to his phone once in a while. Because I never had any problems until I contacted him and told him my story. Now,
people broke into my house two times. I was visited by men with black suits and I was told in no uncertain terms to drop this whole project not to say anymore to anybody or me and my wife and my son could disappear. So there's absolutely no evidence of these break-ins. I challenge anybody to find any evidence of these so-called break-ins or these visits by men in black. No police reports, no nothing. You take that pretty literally after everything that's going on. Well, so I stopped contacting Bart, and now I'm making this video that I'm going to send to Bart. Mr. Cybrell, excuse me. Bart's my brother, man. My brother in heart, my brother in, in Jesus, okay? Um, Bart, being a good friend that he is, called the police for me and told them about the break-ins. Again, no evidence of these police reports. The two detectives that came out and everything questioned me and everything like that, I didn't give them any information at all. At the time, I thought it was a test from the guys in the black suits. I didn't say crap. Um, so all that, all that went away and everything, but it definitely the two guys in the black suits were not the two uh, detectives that came out to question me about the break-ins. But thanks, Bart. <laughs> <clears throat> but no, I don't want any help. I just, I just want somebody to pick up where I left off and be able to prove with the information I've given. And I'm trying to give as much as I can because I know that once I die, I'm not going to be able to be asked any questions. So that's why why I tried to give you a little backstory too. But um, that's about all I can think of. I, I uh, my dad, he raised me by the book. I know he didn't lie to me. And there it is again. My dad would never lie to me. And as I started seeing more and more of what he was telling me was true, I realized my dad wasn't lying. I lifted the lid off my dad's case, and you can see that his name is Cyrus Eugene Akers. He was born on July 17, 1933. He died on September 28, 2002. Uh, here's his badge, and I wanted to see if I could get as close as possible so that you can read the numbers on the bottom which are okay there it is zero seven five nine six zero seven five nine six That's my dad. And it must have been a really early picture because he's only got two stripes, so that, that was back in the 50s, I'm sure. Probably not long after I was born. And there he is. That's my father. Okay, so there we are. Let's summarize what we have here, which is pretty much nothing at all. Number one, notes on the computer about his father's death confession conveniently confiscated by the government. No evidence. Recording of his father's deathbed confession also conveniently lost in a fire of unknown origin. No evidence. Repeated reinforcement that his dad would never lie and he would never lie. Claims of sand supposedly sprinkled with cement powder to recreate the moon scene. Yet with thousands of photos and hundreds of hours of video footage of astronauts walking on the moon and the Lona Rover driving all over it, we see no sand exposed underneath. No evidence. Claims of moon set walls painted black to recreate the blackness of space while on the moon just would not work because studio lighting is going to be reflected back from these painted walls. And we see no evidence of this in any of the videos or the photographs from NASA. The security clearance list contained just one film director, Robert Emenegger, to do all the directing, 
the filming, the lighting, the sound, the props, and the set with no crew to help him. I ask you, how likely is that? Contradictory evidence that President Johnson was at Cannon Air Force Base during that time. No evidence. Claims of the other known people to have allegedly been at Cannon Air Force Base allegedly removed from the web from the Cannon Air Force website during supposed investigation. There is no evidence of this presented. I mean, surely if you're going to try to prove something, wouldn't you have taken screenshots or something of the web page with that information of it? Except that there wasn't. No evidence. Father didn't want his son to say anything about any of this, yet allowed his son to record him and to take notes. Claims of break-ins and threats to his family, but no evidence. The conclusion? There is no evidence of anything that is claimed with, with the exception that his father served in the military. But that's all they have. So, with everything that I've presented to you, you've got to ask yourselves, how likely is it that this confession even happened, let alone all the events that were claimed to happen within that confession occurred? Bart Sabrell was involved in this. And in my opinion, Bart Sabrell is a liar and a grifter. But I'll let you draw your own conclusions. So that's all from me. I'm done with this. Until next time, take care.